All right. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to uh, try and play through uh, several impulses of Old School Tactical and not make as many mistakes as we did last time when we were streaming live and I was uh, trying to talk and be funny and actually play the game at the same time. Yes, an admission that we played several things wrong uh, and also uh, I clearly did not have a, uh, <coughs> a full grasp of the rules mainly because there are a few things that are a little bit different in this game and I'm going to play the rules as written I'm not going to play them how I think they should be played and we'll we'll try and go through things from there so uh, this is the same scenario as last time it's called Rotten Creek and it involves the Soviets attacking the Germans Soviets have to capture these victory hexes I think there's one here somewhere yeah one here and some other stuff there, and we've already knocked shit all over the place. There we go. Oh my gosh. Okay. All right. <coughs> Purposes of the exercise, that'll be fine. First thing we need to do is roll for impulse points. So I'm going to do that for the Soviets first. They roll three dice, and this time that's an interesting roll. That's three, and that's seven they get. Soviets get seven impulse points. That's not a whole lot. The Germans get two dice. Germans only get three impulses. Well, this will be very interesting for our first turn. Seven turns in the scenario. You count the scenario turns down from seven to zero. And I already rolled for initiative earlier on and the Soviets got it. And so we're just gonna stick with that. I, uh, I forgot to press record on the button when I was doing that. So here we go. First action, I'm going to move the units on the uh, top right hand side of the screen here. I'm going to, I probably should set these guys up, I suppose. Um, and I'm going to form a movement group. The leader is going to be attached to the top unit in each stack. So we'll do this. We'll activate this, and it's going to be two activation points. So it goes from seven down to five on the track. These guys move four movement points. Well, let me see if I can get... Uh, where do I really want to start? Here, I guess. I can come down the road. One, two, three. Three. When I stop there... So I can do this, one, two, and then say 340 here. Uh, now I could just say oh, I'm on the road there and say uh, three, and then go four to here. But that would then put me in line of sight of the sniper. So I'm gonna go four and I'm in the building here. Okay, turn him, that's right, we're gonna put a little move marker. You can only move once in a turn. You can fire twice in a turn. You can move and assault move and fire. Oh, sorry, sorry. You can move or assault move. You can fire twice in a turn, but you cannot use your full movement rate twice in a turn. An assault move is one hex and typically you're adjacent to a unit and you're moving into its hex to assault it or melee it, as the case may be. All right. Uh, so now it would be the Germans activation. And they have less points, they will pass. And we'll now activate another stack, and that's going to cost me two more movement points, two more impulse points. And these guys are going to go, that is some sort of rubbly stuff. Two, three, to there. Now. Three to there. Yeah, with that stack, there is no line of sight. There's an interesting rule for line of sight in urban areas, and I'm just I'm going to read it to you, and uh, it will help you understand what goes on here. Uh, dual uh, dual terrain hexes, so rubble road, debris road. The road is used for movement and the terrain is used for defense. The center dots are used for line of sight. Okay, well, that's fair enough. But if a unit is attacked on the road uh, in this dual terrain hex, line of sight can be traced to any portion of the road 
in the hex and does not have to see the center hex dot if it's on the road. So that's an important point where we're uh, considering our lines of sight. Hopefully I won't forget that. All right, so these guys moved. A little moved mark right here. And the Germans will pass again. I'm actually going to move this sniper up. I might bring the sniper on here on this hex here and go one, two, one, two, three, forty here, and stay on the road there, and put a move marker on him. Now that's an impulse point. I've got two impulse points left. I'll activate a stack over here. Whoops, with a leader. You can't see over this side of the board, but just trust me. Uh, one, two, three to here, four to here. You should be able to see that now, just on the edge of the map. It's moved. Now, this sniper could see one, two, can see through, is it two? Two is the maximum it can see through, or it's blocked at two. Let's see if degrading is actually on the chart there. No, it's not. Degrading line of sight. Some terrain, line of sight maybe traced through two hexes of degrading. Okay, so I could see, and now here, here's the, here's the opportunity fire rule uh, in effect. Well, let's get this uh, sorted out here. Am I zoomed in there or something? Oh, yeah, there we go. Here's a line of sight that runs from A to B, okay, from sniper to hex. Now, if I could have seen here, from here to here, which I could not because it would clip that building, I could have shot at the unit, the stack, and picked a unit to shoot at in this hex. But this is the last hex of the opportunity, uh, of the movement, and uh, opportunity fire does not uh, count. So I can't fire at it there. And in most other tactical games, that still would be an eligible fire. And I would spend an opportunity, I would spend an impulse point to activate this guy and fire him. And he would get a little marker and it would say fired. And then in the next activation, I could then fire this dude again and he can fire. And he would fire that chappy twice. And that might be one of the reasons why we don't want to have opportunity fire happening at the on the same in you know twice in a row. Huh. Anyway, it's not eligible. So he can't fire, but it's now it's the German's turn. One, two, three, four, five. He will fire with two degradations. <coughs> That's going to make it uh, minus two on the firepower, I think it is. Uh, die rolls, let's just check. Firepower modifiers, yeah, minus two. So I need two dice, we're going to roll two dice. I need to spot the roll. I've got a bunch of uh, other stuff on the table here behind the camera. And make a little section to roll them. Uh, okay, that's going to be nothing. He rolls a four. Uh, because the result would be he's a, a zero combat strength. And this top guy, I'm going to assume it's the... This guy's four, so it's a minus four attack. And I need to roll nine or better. So that was a bad shot, right? And that cost me an activation point, which is kind of dumb. But that's okay. That was... Uh, did I say that's two, four, five... Six, seven. So that's all the activation points for these guys. They're done. They still have units that haven't come on the board. And uh, these guys can now do whatever they want to do. And we might actually... We only have two activation points, so we're not going to mess with anything, I don't think. But what I might do is scooch up... Well, they can't opportunity fire, so I can move pretty freely at the moment. So I'll move this guy at one. That's one activation point. I have one activation point left. 
And I think what I'll do is cinch this dude back uh, one hex to here. And that allows me to pull uh, different fire groups together. And that's moved, and that's another impulse point. So, I don't know if you can see all that okay, but there, that's that's uh, one turn. It's now turn six. We remove all of these. Just gonna put these over here, remove all these. Okay. And now we're going to roll uh, for activation points, and I'm gonna roll for those Soviets first. And this time we roll 10, 15 points. Then on the five, then on the 10. Germans roll. We roll eight. So we have eight activation points. We're gonna roll for initiative. I'm just gonna roll a d6 for each one rather than two d6, because I can't be bothered finding another die. And the red die will be the Soviets. And the Soviets roll a one, and the Germans roll a five. So the Germans have it and we will begin our turn and the first thing we're going to do is fire at that stack there and i'm going to shoot at the uh sh at the shock squad and i'm just going to roll the dice and let's see if we need to even work out calculating the results i rolled a six so we do need to work that out i'm going to give you a better look at that action in a second so you can see here what's going on we're firing at this top unit. He has a defensive value of four. And he is, uh, ah, he's in the building, so it's gonna give him an extra two. So this might be another worthless shot that we've just made. Let's see. Uh, so he's gonna have uh, basically a defensive factor and, uh, and, and um, defensive factor and the terrain, and the terrain is a, building, hard building, or whatever you want to call it, heavy structure, same, plus two, that's going to be a plus two, plus two, so it makes him a six, that's going to make it a minus four attack, because my attack strength is two, okay, the leader doesn't play into defensive roles, he does play into um, offensive roles, so minus four on the combat table, as we mentioned before, you can see there, that's the four column, and we need to roll a six, and it's blank, it's underneath my thumb, so that's a miss. But he does get a fine factor, and we move this down one, and now we'll activate the Soviets, and these guys will move, or will they fire back? You know what, they're gonna fire back. Let's give you an example of firing here. So I have, uh, I'm gonna make a fire group, and I'm gonna spend two activation points, so it's five combat factors, and five combat factors is 10 combat factors. Uh, plus one for the leader. The leader uh, gets to add his benefit to that. Uh, yeah, he's actually adding uh, to the die roll. So it's 10 versus five for defense. It's a plus five attack. Uh, this guy's gonna die. Plus five attack. Plus one for the leader. No height advantage. And uh, let me see if there's any modifiers on the little cards here. I think we get our... Oh, you know what I could have done is doubled my firepower when I fired that sniper when I fired at the leader. I should remember that next time. Uh, I'm wondering if the firepower is affected when firing at snipers. That's the only thing I'm concerned about. I'm going to check that just one second. No, there's no, there's no uh, disadvantage at shooting at snipers. Okay, so uh, we rolled a net 12 on the firepower of, what did I say, 10? Minus five, oh, he's in the building, minus seven. So where are, where is that gonna put us, what did I say, 10? Minus seven, it's only on the plus three, but still a 12 is gonna be an X, that's just a straight up dead, that dude would be dead. So he's dead, all right? So that guy's gonna go on the casualty track. We'll put him over here. And we will uh, put a fired marker on this guy and we'll take two points off them, one, two. And now it is the Germans activation and their left flank is now open. And they have the least points. They are going to chill and not fire. What they might do though, 
over here. Oh boys, we could look at a shot here at that uh, that sergeant, but I don't think I will. I think I'm going to waste my shots at that. So I'm going to pass. I'm going to let the uh, Soviets move again too. The Soviets are going to bring the rest of their forces on. Uh, they're going to go one, two, three, four to there. That's two, two of these. Zero. They're down to nine now. That comes off the ten track. That gets a move marker. And the Germans will sit tight. Makes sense for them to sit tight. So now these guys will move, and we're gonna. These guys are stuck on a road down here. Let's do this. One, two, three, four. He'll move in the open, and he'll be uh, on the road. Well, it's in the open, so we don't need to worry about a road marker. There he is. There. And. Now, I think once again, it would be smart for the Germans to pass unless we move up. Let's do this. No, I, I, can't, I put these guys down here because they have a nice line of sight up this road and they've got an LMG that's got some good range. So they're gonna pass. Uh, we're gonna now... Uh, Move Germans and uh, move Soviets. Let me get this chap, a sniper, off the road. And he's going to go two to here. This entire stack, though, is not excited about seeing that there. And we know that we're going to sh get shot at if we don't shoot them. So we're going to fire with seven. And a DRM for the leader. Firing at this sniper who has a defense of five plus the building of two. So seven versus seven is going to be a zero attack with a plus one. And I roll a nine, that's going to make it a ten. A ten attack. A ten on the zero table is casualties and a potential suppression. And so what we would do with the potential suppression, I roll a nine. A nine would be enough to be not suppressed, but this guy is dead. There's no flipping uh, snipers, they're just dead. So he goes onto the casualty track for the Soviets. Okay. <coughs> now, that was an activation that let these guys fire, so they used a point. And this guy that moved used a point. And that was not a uh, opportunity fire that we made there. That was a activation after the opportunity fire, after the fire was ended. So now play returns back to the Soviets and the Soviets will move. I think uh, we're gonna pause. We're gonna slip into this building here for two and use two points. These guys will pass and now we're gonna move our Sergeant out of the Wilderness, and he's going to go one, two, three to there. That is also an exposed uh, area, I think. Let's see if I've got a, a line of sight there. Let's grab a little card. I know, I, obviously, I don't, do I? Look. Hmm. Okay. Don't know what I was thinking there. All right, never mind. Okay, so they moved. These guys will... Hmm. I'm tempted to try and take these guys out, but I don't think that's a good idea. Making a little counterattack. We'll wait. Pass. So, did I move two points for those chaps? Don't believe I did. Okay, now. Moved, 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 moved. These guys have all, all moved. So we're done unless we're firing. The Germans will stay there. We might take a pot shot. Right up here. I think we're gonna do that. Oh, I think that gets in the way. What do you think? I think it does. I don't know. Let me get a longer piece a longer straight edge. Hello. I think we're good. Easy. It's only one, deg one degrading hex. 
So these are going to fire. He's going to fire at the leader. Uh, is there a leader in that hex? There's not a leader in the hex. Okay. Mm, it's going to be a minus two attack. We're still going to do it. Minus two attack. Ah, nothing. Nothing. I roll the six. Nothing. So he's fired once. That's for one. Soviets might fire back at that guy. But we don't have the range, so he can't. This guy can't see him. This guy can't see him. These guys will fire again. Another one. And the Soviets will pass. Same attack. Another six. You suck, dude. Okay. So he's now used and done. And I think I'm going to pass for the Germans. I don't think there's anything else we can do or want to do at this point. And that would be the end of turn two. Uh, turn six, rolling down to turn five. Well, you know what? Turn six, actually, before we move, before we go any further, turn six, we get reinforcements anywhere on the north edge. So that's what the Soviets will do with their reinforced that they'll, they'll have uh, one stack of guys to bring in and they will bring them in on the road down here and they will move them one two three four here right here and they're going to try and sneak in this way and that will leave them with two two points left and that's the end of that turn and now we're at the beginning of turn five and that's where I'm going to stop the video. We'll make another video uh, a little bit later on. Uh, and we'll catch up in turn five or four. Bye.